The White House announcing uh, the first 10 prescription drugs selected for Medicare price negotiations. Bertha Coombs joins us now with more. Hey, Bertha. Yeah, this is a landmark day, Joe. You know, Medicare has always set rates for doctors and medical care. But under the Inflation Reduction Act, for the very first time, the agency has been given the authority to negotiate drug prices. CMS releasing the first 10 drugs chosen for negotiation under Medicare Part D prescription plans this morning. And some of the names are the ones we were expecting. Bristol-Myers Squibb's Eliquis, that's a uh, blood thinner. Jardiance, that is a diabetes drug. We're also looking at Bayer's Zeralto, another blood thinner. Uh, Merck's Genuvia is also on the list. Farsiga is on the list. And Tresto, Enbril, which is for, uh, for diabetes, I believe. Uh, Imbruvica, Stellara, and then a number of uh, diabetes drugs there as well. The companies, the CMS says these selected drugs accounted for $50.5 billion in total Part D gross prescription drug costs, or about 20% of the total programs uh, between June 1st, 2022, and May 31st, 2023. So essentially the second half of last year and more or less the first half of this year. The process now begins with the October 1st. The drug companies will have until then to respond as to whether they want to go into negotiations. The actual negotiations, the back and forth discussions begin in February and will last through August 1st. And then a year from now, on September 1st, 2024, CMS will name what they call the fair market price after those negotiations. Now, of course, we know that a number of these drug makers on the list, expecting that they would be on the list, have already filed suit against uh, the Biden administration, saying that they believe this is essentially not really a negotiation where they're being handed an offer they can't refuse, because if they choose not to negotiate, they face onerous fines, or they may not be able to sell any drugs into federal programs like Medicare and Medicaid. No doubt we will start hearing from them today as it goes. The Chamber of Commerce has joined in with a number of those drug makers, and it has actually asked the courts to issue a stay uh, before that October 1st deadline starts kicking in this negotiation process. Joe, Becky? Wow. Uh, yeah, that, that's a good point, Bertha. Could be years, I guess, um, in the courts. Right? It could be years in the courts. It could go forward. And this, these first 10 drugs are just the first. This goes on over the next several years. So these first 10 drugs will be implemented, the prices on them, the negotiated prices, in the 2026 Medicare Part D plans. The following year, another 10 Part D drugs. Then the following year, they introduced 15 Part B, which those are the drugs like um, Lucentis that has to be applied by a physician or a clinician. Part B and Part D, by the time we get to the end of the decade, up to 60 drugs will have been negotiated under this program. Negotiated. Are, are these pri can we call them price caps, price controls? What, is that really what we're talking about? Bertha, in a it? sense, uh, you know, yeah. but these drug deal, these, the, the proponents argue that these drug companies negotiate with other countries that have single payer. And so what results is that you've seen in some of those countries, for example, you know, Ozempic, for, just for diabetes. Here in the U.S., it's nearly $1,000. In France, the cost is about $88. So mm. that's one of the things that people are trying to get at, the fact that we are paying 10 times more often and sometimes than other countries that are also OECD countries that are not necessarily countries that are poor. Hey, hey Bertha, they make the point, as, as you pointed out, that these drugs made up $50.5 billion in the total Part D gross covered prescriptions cost of about 20 percent. Did they just take the top 10 biggest costs, or was it there a little more? It didn't take... There, there were some other criteria. These had to be drugs that have been on the market in terms of 
uh, basic chemical drugs, if you will, for 10 years. Those that are gene or cell therapies have to be on for 13 years and not have any competition. So Humira, which has been in the top 10 often, is not on this list because it now has eight competitors already, and by next year, I think might have 12, uh, what they call biosimilars, which are sort of the generic version of cell therapies. So these are drugs that don't have any competition at the moment. I'll just make the point. Um, look, Symbicort, uh, not on the list. That's uh, one that we thought exactly. maybe was. It's a COPD and asthma drug from AstraZeneca. But if you look at AstraZeneca, it's still trading down a little bit. But that may be because Farsiga, which is also an AstraZeneca drug that we didn't think was going to be on the list, did make the list. Um, that's a diabetes drug from AstraZeneca, too. So it's going to take some time. Uh, probably. Yeah, it's one. kind of interesting. I. I... I'd spoken with uh, the FDA commissioner earlier this summer, and the FDA gave them some advice in terms of the importance of these drugs and how they worked and things like that as they were trying to develop the criteria. So they've, there's been an awful lot of study, and it's not just about price that they're looking at, but certainly Eliquis has been the top drug for years now that they've been spending on. So everyone was pretty sure that that was going to be on the list, along with Zarelto. All right. Very good. I don't know what half those drugs do, but, um, you know, we have an aging population, too, Bertha. So a lot of people, it does affect uh, a lot of people. And, and it, it, on face value, it will be a positive if, if the prices, obviously, uh, are cheaper. It, it and, could it, be, Joe, although... It, it, you know, Go the ahead. question that I wonder, and I keep asking people, you know, the, the Congressional Budget Office says, you know, we'll save somewhere over $270 billion over 10 years on these drugs, potentially. But I wonder whether there'll be cost shifting, you know, in terms no of doubt. medical care. We yeah. all in individual plans and commercial plans sometimes pay one and a half or two and a half times the Medicare rate. Will the drug makers then shift and charge more to commercial plants, or will they, knowing that they have a shorter runway, if you will, start those launch prices even higher? You know, it's bound, there's bound to be unintended consequences. There always are. Uh, you, you know, you squeeze, it's like uh, trying to squeeze a, a balloon, and, you, you know, you just see things come out other places you weren't expecting, and not always good. Uh,